We're getting down to the home stretch in part four of this five part monster e bike build. This episode, we're fixing the throttle, mounting the headlight, and a lot more, so let's go. On the last episode, we just about finished the prototype acrylic dashboard. This is going to give us full RGB control of all of our lighting strips. Let's mount it on the bike and make sure it works. We did chop through a massive amount of wiring last episode, so it's always good to do some periodic checks for functionality. Looks like everything's working as it should, and I must say, this looks really cool. I wanted to leave those three LEDs the same color so I could get some contrasting colors between the lighting. Now, if you've been following along in my previous episodes, you've known that I've had quite the headache with different lighting, like front headlight setups. My first experiment was a failure, and then the second one was almost a success, but it wouldn't turn on with my toggle switch. I did get it to work for one second, but then it burned up and wouldn't turn on again. So again, I'm borrowing more parts from my last e-bike build. I've had a lot of success with these mini off-road light bars. They're designed to run off 12 volts, so it will be very easy to integrate this in our system. I should have just bought a connector, but I wanted to get this done more quickly, so I didn't want to wait around for any more parts to arrive, so I'm just chopping up a computer Molex connector. So I took a 4-pin and pretty much making my own 2-pin connector. After a lot of cutting it up, the housing was somewhat compromised, but that's not anything I can't fix with some hot glue and also some heat shrink. Now I'm just trying to figure out how the mounting bracket is going to go. Unfortunately, the handlebar mount tubes only come with 8mm bolts, and these brackets are a lot smaller, so I will have to modify those to get them to fit. Unfortunately, the brackets that came with this light are a little too short, and I'm going to have to fabricate some longer ones. Once I complete getting these brackets on and also finishing up the connector, I can move on to our throttle issues that we are having that have been plaguing us throughout this whole build. You could probably make an entire connector out of hot glue, it's just incredible. Okay, I finally figured out what was going on with this throttle connector here. Even though they look pretty much identical, they are actually slightly different. Even though the plug would insert as if it was working correctly, it actually wasn't making contact, which of course is not going to work if the pins are not physically touching each other. What is also odd is the yellow color is slightly discolored, it's more orange on the other one as you can see. Once I was able to get a matching connector set, then everything worked smoothly. What's also weird on the old one, the colors actually lined up, but the pins didn't touch. This one, the colors, the internal colors are different, but the pins actually touch, so I don't know what's going on with that. I was only able to figure out this problem by connecting it up and then having one end with the leads exposed and then testing, and I realized that there was no signal coming through the connector, so I knew something was wrong with the connection. Never underestimate the powers of troubleshooting skills. They are invaluable. The light does not fit correctly. It is too close to the handlebars, so now I'm just modifying these brackets to accept a larger bolt, and then also I'm going to have to be fully fabricating my own brackets to make the standoffs even longer. I should have just bought some L-channel, but I didn't want to go to the store, and I already had a lot of this laying around, so I figured I would just create my own. So let's finish up this fab so we can finally get this headlight, number three, installed on the bike. Thankfully, aluminum is pretty soft and easy to work with.
Now, since I'm putting so much weight on this extra handlebar piece now, it is starting to slip on the bars because it cannot grip it tightly enough. They're held on with these plastic gaskets and they are slipping because there's not enough friction. To create more friction, I'm going to be not only making the bars larger, but the plastic is going to dig in more easily to the electrical tape wrapping that I'm going to be doing. I think if these were actually made out of rubber instead of plastic, they wouldn't be sliding around as much, but they're plastic, so I have to modify it. The front headlight isn't too heavy, but because I'm extending it out so far, that leverage is just making it a bit too much for these little plastic clamps to hold it down properly. Once I can get this fully tightened down, I'll then set the spacing for the dashboard and the display so that they're not either too close or too far away from each other. I have so many different components mounted to these handlebars that there are so many different little mounts with multiple screws. As you can see, it takes a while to adjust every little twist and turn and making sure everything is spaced correctly. The really good thing about having five kilowatts is it doesn't matter how much weight you put onto your bike is still gonna be ridiculously fast. Now, from the dashboard prototype, I only did a few tweaks to the design. I mainly added some pass-through holes for zip ties so that we can mount the top LED strip onto the dashboard. This time I'm also using cast acrylic instead of extruded acrylic like I did with the prototype. The main benefit of this is that when you're engraving, the contrast between the non-engraved and engraved parts is a lot more defined, which will make your engraved parts much more opaque, which also produces a really cool effect when edge lit. And I will show a lot more of that effect in the next and final video. And let's see how this came out. It might not look that noticeable compared to the prototype, but when I do a side-by-side -side comparison later, you will really see the differences. This print came out really, really well, and I am very happy with it. I want these brackets to be black, so they gotta come off the bike. And now we have to swap the prototype with the new final design, and here you can really see the differences in the print, especially on the left side, the digi components, they are much more opaque. And if you remember, there is a slight curve to the edges so that they can mount flush with the mount, so I have to replicate that on this one as well. I originally had the LED strip that was going to be mounted on the top of this dashboard to be tied in with the other LED strips on the bike. This was going to pose an issue for the modularity that I was going for. If I attach the strip to the dashboard, but then that strip is also attached to the bike, then I can't remove the dashboard from the strip because that's then attached to the bike. Even though it is going to take a little bit more work to be able to make this modular, I think it's worth it because if I ever want to remove the dashboard then it's going to be a lot easier than having to clip the zip ties and then redo them after. It's just going to be a pain. This RGB controller is really cool. It even has twice the amount of pads that you would need so I can just tie in right here where the other ones are and it's not going to be a problem. So I'm going to tie in the RGB strip, I'm going to tie it into the controller, mount it to the dash, and then rebuild everything back to where it was. Another tweak I wanted to make on the final build was taking care of these LEDs because they're a little too bright and shining right in your face and also these silver elements were 
kind of making it hard to read the text on top of them. So my blue Sharpie made for a great diffuser. And bonus points that it matches the bike's theme of just little tinges of blue everywhere. Okay, now I think I'm ready for the final assembly of this dashboard, and I was excited to have it fully completed. For some reason the voltage readout did not survive this change or this heat gun application that I gave it because it just stopped working so I thankfully had another one of these that I could just easily swap it out. I'm honestly not surprised it didn't survive. These things are only like 23 cents. So we'll get this one swapped out and then we can move on to finally assembling and completing this dashboard. I've been using zip ties to hold on my edge lighting and it works great but it is kind of a little bit unsightly so I will be working on developing an acrylic mount for edge lit LEDs. I already have some designs in my head I just need to prototype them and see if they're actually going to work but zip ties will always be the fastest and easiest method for attaching things. I don't know what it is with these standoffs, but if you do not apply Loctite, they will just come out magically. You could set this piece down, come back a week later, and the screws would be like out of it somehow. It's just crazy. Lose a screw once, shame on me. Lose a screw twice, it's time to use some Loctite. And the finishing touch are these aluminum control knobs. They feel and look a lot nicer than those splines. And let's check it out. It came out great. It is by no means perfect, but I think it came out really cool. I love building these little dashboards and I've done it for some of my previous e-bike builds. I've made a custom dashboard for my car and I know I will be making more in the future. I think it all came together really well for a very cyberpunk look. The transparency, the colors, the PCB, the wires, and of course the graphics and everything just looks really tied together and it just looks awesome. I can't wait to show you this on the bike with all the lights going and everything. We're at the end of episode 4 and in the next and final episode we will finally put it all together and take it for a ride. As always thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end I really appreciate it. The final episode where we take high speed runs, a bunch of glamour shots so you can see the full build in its entire completed glory, and a ton of riding action. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Yeah.